Hi, I'm Dr. Philip McMillan. Thank you for joining me again for another interesting topic about COVID-19 with other viruses. This is what we call co-infections. The question is, or for me, the question was, why is this happening? And I'm explaining to you why it's something that disturbs me in terms of the, the trend, but I'll explain to you by showing you the data to see why this is such an important question. And the data is, as usual, the John Hopkins Coronavirus Resource Center. This is an extremely valuable um, place to look to get an update as to exactly where we are in the world. I'll show you full screen here. This is the 20th of December. And what I'm showing you here in red are the areas where you are having active infections within 28 days cases. As usual, I pointed out, Africa largely has been um, spared by this. And as you zoom in, you can see that Europe has lots of red spots. Africa doesn't. What's the difference? I'll let you think about it and see what you come up with. But the question remains, why are we having infections circulating in this part of the world. Why is it that Omicron, which is extremely transmissible, has not built mucosal immunity so that the infection dies and you get herd immunity, which is what we're targeting. And again, Africa seems to have achieved herd immunity and they have done this without trying too hard. Why is it that it is not appearing in the rest of the world? This is the question I'm going to try and address, and it has significance with regards to also what I think is occurring with an outbreak starting in the UK with group A strep. Now, this is happening in children, but the connection between the two, I think, is highly relevant. Some of the stuff that I can say may be controversial, and so you may find that at a certain point, you're going to need to follow this on Substack, okay? So let's just start off with some basic stuff. Again, the question, why are we having increased circulation of COVID-19 and co-infection with other viruses, influenza, RSV, where you have somebody infected with both at the same time? And the reason I thought about this was because normally what happens is that if you have one virus infecting a cell or spreading in, in the body, the body produces interferon. Interferon is a very broad antiviral in that it shuts down the protein making mechanism inside cells. So it doesn't target a specific virus, it just stops all viruses from being able to replicate. So the question is, why would you then have, if you had infection say with COVID, how then could you get another infection with influenza or RSV? Because in theory, the interferon should have blocked the production of viral particles, and therefore it would only be dealing with one infection. So this is where we go into what the details were. And my starting point is usually the first phase of the pandemic, because that's where we get an accurate picture as to what happened with regards to how the virus operates in a normal setting. So this paper here, this is in 2020, in May 2020, well, published in July, Community Acquired Viral Respiratory Infections Among Hospitalized Inpatients During a COVID-19 Outbreak in Singapore. They were looking at co-infection and they were specifically focused on clinical outcomes. The bit that I want to focus on, and I've put the link in the bottom so that you can look at it for yourself. So of the hospitalized patients that they had, this is the bit that I'm very interested in. Only six of the 431 patients who had SARS-CoV had a co-infection. That means they had more than one virus. So that means the rate of co-infection was about 1.4%. That's not very high, and that's what we would expect with a viral infection. And again, the reason I'd expect that is because some people would have interferon autoantibodies. And interferon autoantibodies, as I said, interferon is the signaling protein. The 
cells that are infected warn other cells that we've got virus, shut down your mechanism. The problem with interferon autoantibodies is that they will then bind to the interferon pro produced by the infected cell and prevent it from warning other cells. And we had known from the first and second waves that interferon autoantibodies in the general population, which is up to 10%, was in and of itself a risk factor for severe COVID-19. So it is an important point that we have to think about. So the point is, at the beginning of the pandemic, the risk of co-infection was in the region of about 1% to 2%. So if you have this level of infection and immunity being acquired, and we know that natural immunity is robust, in theory, as we go back to the coronavirus map here, in theory, we should have largely had a picture like what's happening in Africa, where there is technically not much COVID-19. Instead, we're having this picture across Europe where we're still having circulating virus. And in my mind, that suggests that the problem is to do with interferon. Because if interferon is being produced, why would you therefore have infection versus co-infection? You just, you just shouldn't have it. So it led me to ask the question, why would this be occurring? And could there be any connection with regards to regions that are highly vaccinated? Because this is where we're seeing the circulation of Omicron. At this point, we need to focus in on the science and not be afraid to ask hard questions. And so right at this point, if you're watching live, wonderful. I want you to remember to join me on Substack for posts, podcasts, and videos since March 2020. I can promise that I will bring you up-to-date science, challenging science, and I'm usually ahead of the research.